Hi everyone, I'm Mel, the founder of Lost Island Press. Please excuse the background noise. I'm filming this outside and there are quite a few birds out here. But anyways, today we're meeting with my amazing author friend, Erin Forbes. Erin published the first installment of her series at the age of 16, has attended multiple speaking and signing events, and now has a dedicated following of readers on her social media platforms. So I know that you published The Elementals when you were 16, right? Yes. So at what age did you start writing the book? I started writing The Elementals when I was probably around 12. And it took me like, up until I was 16, I published it then. So it took me a few years to get it done. And obviously, I didn't know anyone else who was a published author really well. So it was a lot of me trying to figure it out on my own. And my parents were super encouraging with it, but um, it was a learning process. It's funny because like after I published my first book, I started working on the second and the second came out within like a year. So you started writing that book when you were in what was that elementary school, middle school? I was in middle school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think it was in like seventh grade or something, sixth or seventh grade. Yeah. So from middle school to high school. And yeah. Okay. I get the impression that you're a really good student. So in terms of your, <laughs> your first book in particular, how were you able to balance writing with school, especially since you were still figuring out the whole writing process as well? Right. So for me, I think it was kind of a unique situation um, because I was homeschooled. So I had the ability to kind of like, time manage in a way that a lot of kids who go to public school or private school don't you know you still have to get all of the same work done but you can you know kind of bend your schedule as far as it goes like mm -hmm. you could start later in the morning you could start earlier in the morning and oftentimes you don't have to wait for other people to get things done so the school day goes by a lot quicker oftentimes even if you're doing the same amount of work I think that was a big help in the fact that I wanted to write a book as well and I could incorporate that into my English studies you know yeah that's really cool you could kind of build it into the curriculum as well but I'm sure time management was still a struggle oh, I think it became a bit more difficult to manage my time when I was in like high school heading into college because it's like you have a lot more that you're doing than you do in middle school and it's you know preparing for that next stage of life is just a lot. I found when I was in high school especially writing in the evenings is what worked best for me either the evenings or the early mornings because um, that's when I was free and that's when I could spend hours on it without interruption, usually unless it was like testing week or something. <laughs> your writing time has to complement your school schedule. You can't just write whenever you want. So yeah. It's, it's really hard to make time for it in your schedule. I saw an interview with you the other day. I think it came out pretty soon after you published your first book. Um, oh, really? <laughs> and yeah, I'll just read through this one section that I saw. Um, so you said, as a self-published author, everything is my own responsibility. This includes writing, editing, copywriting, marketing, cover design, photography, social media, and website design. Despite the large amount of work that was involved in self-publishing my first book, it was a remarkable experience. So not only did you publish your book while you were already so young, but you also self-published it. And I think when people hear the word self-publishing, they don't really think about how much work that actually entails. The first hurdle of self-publishing your book is writing the book, but then publishing is like a whole nother beast. So definitely, how, how were you able to balance not only the writing of the book, but also the publishing process and learning how that worked for the first time? As far as balancing writing, for me, it often came like that was the thing that I did for fun when I was in high school. Like if I had spare time, I i mean, I would spend time on my phone. Yes, like all teenagers do. Mm -hmm. But like I, I would spend time writing whenever I had free time usually. So when it came to self-publishing, I had done a lot of research beforehand and kind of tried to discern whether or not I wanted to go the traditional route or if I wanted to self-publish because I had heard of people... I knew who did both. So I interviewed some authors and some writers who were going into the publishing industry. And I kind of decided that as a creative person, I really wanted to like be involved in the creative process of like, not just writing my book, but I wanted to choose my editors. I wanted to choose my cover designer. I wanted to work one-on-one -on -one with them. When you traditionally publish, oftentimes you hand your book over and 
not everything is up to you in that sense. So I was really looking forward to like being involved in that. And it definitely took a lot of time. <laughs> and I think that's probably why it took me so many years to get the first book out because mm -hmm. I wasn't really that familiar with it and trying to like navigate that whole area whilst getting everything done is a lot. I think that reaching out to fellow authors is really important because we can always give each other advice. Once you have everything kind of figured out in that way, it becomes a lot easier to balance. But at first, it's it's a lot. <laughs> so when you publish that, that first book, were you planning to publish it as a series or was it planning to just be one book as a standalone? Yeah, so when I first published The Elementals, I was not thinking of it as a series. The ending was almost like a cliffhanger where you feel like it could pick up or it could not, you know, after I published it and it started to pick up, I was like, I have to make more of this. That's awesome. I think it's so cool how you started writing the first book in this universe as a middle schooler and you've like stuck to that same universe till now. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely is very strange because, you know, the first one came out when I was 16. I started writing it when I was 12 and now I'm almost 22 and graduating college and the finale is right. going to be coming out next year. So. so you're in college now. Are you a full-time student? Have you been a full-time student this entire time? When I was in high school, I did like online college courses. So I ended up skipping a year. So when I started college, I was a sophomore. So um, I've been full time for the past three years. Um, wow. And it's been a lot. Yeah, that would probably be a huge shift in how you manage your time from going from being homeschooled to a full time student in college. Some people ask me, they're like, when's the next book coming out, which is obviously super exciting. And I want people to be excited about it. But also my time management for the past year has been kind of like, the priority has been my senior year of school. You know, writing has kind of taken like a shift back. But at the same time, I'm so excited for when I graduate. I'll definitely have more time to devote to it and be able to get the finale out. But when I published The Kindred Woods, which was my third book in the series, I think I was either a sophomore or a junior in college. Oh. I was about halfway through it when I started the semester of that, the first semester of that year. And um I had spent most of the summer working on it. I always use the summer to like get done as much as I possibly can. I did some like editing during the fall and then I finished it up during winter break. And then the book came out on May 1st. So it was a lot wow. of working on my schedule and really taking advantage of the time that I had to spare, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So how did your time ba or time strategy kind of change from high school into college? What did you have to adjust? Well, I feel like when I was in high school, it was definitely like, oh, you'll have you'll have free time to do it. Like, don't worry about it. Because I always managed to find spare time to work on it. But when I was in college, it's like the projects are a lot bigger that you're working on for school. They take a lot more time. And so I really had to schedule it a lot more. I had to be like, OK, I have this many weeks during winter break. How much writing can I get done then? And how can I schedule it so that I can actually accomplish those things so I think that when I when I went to college it became a lot more structured and just out of curiosity where do you see your writing career going in the future obviously the finale to this series comes out probably next year that's my goal um, I'm working on the cover right now so super excited oh, nice. about that. Um, and you know that's what I've published so far is my fire and ice book series and that's the world that I've created. Some people ask me if I'm going to continue with the series after the finale or if I'm gonna continue with that world. And I think that like, you know, there's some authors who they develop a series and then they several years later open it up with different characters in the same world. I've mm -hmm. thought about doing that. So it's definitely not something that I'm opposed to. And um, I just love the world that I've created in Ashling so much that I feel like it'd be hard to like, separate myself from. So I may consider opening up another series in the future in the realm of Ashling, but I'm also writing a children's book that I worked on Ooh. for my senior thesis. It's called oh, A Crown awesome. of Girls. <laughs> yeah. And it's a uh, it's about a little girl with curly hair. So I'm hoping to have that published probably sometime next year as well. But oh my gosh, yeah. it's gonna be so cool. <laughs> I think like I've always been really in love with the fantasy world, but over the past like year or so, I've come, re I've become really interested in historical fiction and things like that. So I don't think that I'd want to limit myself to just fantasy. I think 
lots of different genres I'd be interested in. I also really love poetry. So there's tons of different directions I could possibly go. <laughs> cool. I'm <laughs> excited to see what stuff you put out. And I think it'd be cool if we could end off with you sharing some advice that you have for people who are maybe still full-time students and they're struggling to make time to write or prioritizing it, or if they're working full-time and they're just really struggling with the time management aspect, what advice would you give them? I think the number one piece of advice I would give them is don't feel the need to rush it because oftentimes when we're working on a project and we're super excited about it, we feel like, oh, how, how soon can I get this done? And that's, that's a good mindset to have because it keeps you motivated. But at the same time, like, don't get down on yourself if you can't finish this book in a year. Like, that's what I was hoping to do with the finale of my series, but it's not always possible. So um, I think just giving yourself the grace to really step back and like nourish your creativity in the project you're doing is an important thing because you can rush yourself so much that you might lose sight of what's really important in that project. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really good advice. And that's something I definitely have to take to heart as well because I tend to rush things and I, I set like milestones in my head of I have to finish yeah. this before my birthday or before I graduate high school, that kind of thing. Right. So before we end off, if people are interested in your books or following you online, where can they find you? Yeah, so my books, the Fire and Ice book series are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. They usually come up if you just search Aaron Forbes. Um, my website is www.fireandicebookseries.com. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, which is where I usually am, <laughs> it's <laughs> at Aaron Forbes author and at Fire and Ice book series. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video and huge thank you to Erin for coming and sharing her advice with us today. I'm going to have all of the links to her social profiles as well as her books in the description box below. Also, I will mention that Lost Island Press has a Discord community now. It's called The Lost Island and it's hosted by our team director, Nora. It's a really great resource for writers, readers, and graphic designers. You can meet other like-minded people, share your work, promote yourself. It's a cool place, so definitely check it out. I'm going to have the link in the description below as well. It's lostislandpress.com slash discord. Thank you so much for being here at the Lost Island Press YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next video.